Before we move forward, I just want to say thanks. That last video brought a lot of people out of the woodwork and everyone left such wonderful and encouraging comments. Seriously, just everyone. I think in a way I kind of needed that. So I just wanted to say thank you to everybody. Really, I appreciate it more than you know. So welcome back to another Lord Duckman production. You know this bus frame that I've got at home here? Yeah, you know the story. I hacked up a rotted 1967 deluxe bus that didn't have much going for it. It was headed to the crusher per Declan. Um... Hey, there's smoke coming out of this porter cable. So I saved this bus, or at least what I could from it. Most of the body parts were destined to go to Gregory, but this chassis had no home. Get the f*** out of here! You can't put this on YouTube now! Yeah. It's in good enough shape that it validates repair, although some people would probably like to argue that. <laughs> but it shall be fixed and is destined to become yet another custom Duckman build. That's right, it's going to be something that I haven't yet determined. It depends on what I can find for it and what is available to me. I have a couple of plans and it shall be announced once I have a final go in mind, so please stick around if you want to find out. Now you saw in the last video that I cut out and patched a new section of frame that I had made from some salvage exercise equipment. It's not complete, but it's strong enough to not worry about the frame collapsing under its own weight. Now it's time to move on over to the other side and get that patched in just the same, then continue straightening out these frame spars so we can finally get the rust removed and add a coat of paint. But hey, I am already ahead of myself here. So please, licky likey comment and finger from that subscribe button. And while you're down there, don't forget to pluck that dingle belly so you get updates every time that I upload a new video. And we'll be back right after that intro. Some people were a little quick to jump to the conclusion that the frame is all rotten in the middle and needs to be replaced, but I beg to differ. I think the frame is actually quite good in the middle. There's only a little section in here that needs to be actually cut out. The rest of it is not rotten, it's just mostly surface rust. I mean, as I've demonstrated up here, it's mostly come off. You gotta continue scrubbing at that with a wire brush, however, and treat it with some more of the cat piss acid, and it will make a hell of a difference to bring this thing back to proper bare metal. And that's where we're gonna be. As far as replacing this whole section with box steel, no, because I'll never get it straight as it's supposed to be ever again. It's not going to be quite right. Now, this is going to be something custom, and I suppose it wouldn't matter quite so much, but in this case, no, I'm not replacing the center section because that's more work than I need to put into it, and it's going to cost me a lot more money than what I already have because all well, this steel that you see over here is free. That's right. All that was roadside pickup. Anyway, we're going to keep cutting and welding, and we're going to patch this thing together because really, like I said, it's not really that much work, but we do have to attack that corner over there. That's the one that's looking the worst. So, let's hop to it. We'll do the same thing as we did over here. All right, so to replace that corner, we'll just use a piece of angle iron, which was originally some square tube, again, from exercise equipment. This is something Rob found on the roadside, and we're just gonna cut it and weld it right into place, right in here, same as we did over on the other side. Of course, we'll build a little angle in there, so I gotta cut out the center section of it. But I need approximately 16, 17 inches of it to be able to rebuild what we got in here. Once we've got that set, the remaining scrap will patch the inside. But anyway, we're going to blow through this video a whole lot faster because all the extreme details of what I was doing was actually in the last video. So if you watched the last one, link above in the corner of the screen. If you haven't, please go check it out. It'll give you a little more details of what's going on, but we're going to push through this thing and we're going to try to do it as quickly as possible. All right, you guys tired of seeing this thing? I'm tired of seeing this thing. It's not holding us together with any structural rigidity anymore, so bye-bye. Broken sawzall blade. Well, that really cleaned it up quite a bit. You can see, oh, 
freaking kid screaming across the road. My God. You can see really, really easily what needs to be continued out of here. Oh my God, the kid's screaming. I swear I want to turn their heads to the left and unscrew it. Anyway, ha, that's what we need to cut out. It's a whole lot less bad than this one is, but nonetheless, still needs to be cut out exactly the same as this one with that kind of a, oh, I don't know, 30 degree angle or something. Make that little patch piece in there. So now that that center section is out of the way, this frame is starting to look even cleaner than it was. I need to cut that out of there too, but we'll get to that. I need to find me a cutting disc so I can get in there and take care of that because you saw what happened. My very last one broke. Yep. Hmm. I found one more. I was having a little trouble with the wire feed there, but that's a whole lot better. There we go. And now I fixed exactly Don's little boo-boo. There we saw it into the frame. <laughs> Alright, looking here in the front, you can see how the frame kind of zigs. So it goes from straight to in to out and then in again. So I need to straighten that out. You might actually be able to better see it from this angle. Yeah, you see it? Kind of comes out this way and then out this way and then back again. So anyway, I need to straighten some of that out. In fact, there's a kink right here. I can hammer some of that out. I'll take this out of the way temporarily. In fact, it's not even tight anymore. Hammer that kink out of it. There's a kink down here too. May or may not have to put a relief cut into it, but this is progress and progress is good, right? quite nicely. All right, do the same on this side over here. Welding that in and then hammering that out and I couldn't hammer that out until this was in because anytime I started bending or twisting here it would cause this to do all kinds of stuff well looking now at this frame it is much straighter than it was oh man that's much better still needs to go in a little bit right here that side looks to be bowing out a little bit too particularly on the bottom it's actually out like this but I'll fix that this side looks pretty good vertically um, I may have to put a little pie cut right there. It looks like there may be a little fatigue or something in that spot. So I may have to do that just to bend it in a little bit more. Because as you notice, that piece of wood, which was tight in the last video, is now loose. So we'll get that in there. And on this side, most of the problem is right here, is a crack. And if I stand on this frame, like when I bounced on it the other day, <laughs> <laughs> flexed, but it flexed right there. This is our weakest point right now. It's actually even weaker than that. But this needs to be addressed too. But I want to square that up first, so that way the front end 
is all ready to rock and roll. And then we'll work our way back here with getting these square. And I think this side vertically is okay, but this side has that crack. So, I thought there was more than one crack on this side. I thought there was one on the top somewhere too. Maybe that was over here? I don't know, there was another crack I thought I had seen on top. Maybe I was just thinking things. But anyway, definitely one on the bottom. Needs to be All addressed. Right, just getting Big a closer time. look right here, I can see that the top is kinked. Oh, it's so kinky. And when I put the level out here, you can see the straight edge is revealing that it's not flat either. So this is definitely where there's a problem. Now, I'll never get this straight as is. So what I have to do is I'll have to put a little cut right in there and then jack it up, same as we did on the other side. It should then go straight. I just gotta be extra careful because there's less metal holding this together on the top side. So, when we get this thing squared up, I have to be real careful here that it doesn't break off because this is all that's holding it together, this vertical section right here. So when I cut that out, it's gonna be a zigzaggy section. And that means this is gonna wanna go all kinds of nuts. So I gotta be real careful in here. It might even be a smart idea just to uh, put a couple of tacks right there. And you know what? I might just do that. This is all gonna get cut out again later anyway, but this is just to reinforce it so it doesn't go all fucking nuts on me. All right. Well, that looks like complete shit, but it gives me the confidence to battle my demons. I made this patch a little bigger than the previous side. It's gonna go right here. That. Is it up here? Yep. I should do it. Yeah. I think we need to cut a little more out of the pie in there. Bring that tighter. That's not a problem. A screw that was sticking through the frame. Before I came out here, I was gonna put on a different pair of pants that were more beat up. And as soon as I walked past the frame, I caught that screw, ripped my pants. So now I'm wearing these because they have holes in them. <laughs> Ah, oh, oh, oh. All right, we are flat all the way across. Yeah, there's a little low spot right there, but what's important is that I'm level here. Once this is welded in, I can actually beat that back out, so that's not a big deal. What we're gonna do is we're gonna bring these two pieces back together here, and we're gonna weld this seam shut. Then we're gonna get ready to start cutting out the bottom. And it will build the strength back into this before I start cutting more of it out. <laughs> The square up with the beam and then we got my level attached to the lower spar here and then we're looking and we're touching there but we're not touching over here so yes this actually does need to go up a little bit more so that means what we're gonna have to do here is we're gonna have to make another pie cut and uh, move this whole section up in here and I'm thinking this we probably should cut out of the bottom of it because that's where it's most rotten right up through here and leave it with a bit of a gap so that way when I jack it up it'll close up and it doesn't have to go much so we'll make about uh, about two blade widths or so right up through here and I think we'll be okay after that Well, as I tell people new on YouTube, never stop running that camera. Well, I did. And 
I screwed up. The frame kind of collapsed, twisted up, and it's kind of fucked up now. Not good. Well, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna take the jack back out of there, pull that lever back out, and, oh man, <laughs> it's not the end of the world, it's just, it's just messy. Uh, I'll knock that 2x4 out, lower the jack back down, try to get things centered back up. I might have to put a splint on either side of it just to hold it straight. And I put the jack in a different position. Rather than jacking here, I probably should jack more underneath the middle. Whereas that really wasn't a problem so much before on the other side, but anyway. Yeah, I screwed up. Oh well. Happens, right? <laughs> well, quite to my surprise, when I lowered down the um, jack, everything kind of went back into alignment. At least this way, anyway. Vertically, it's still going to need a little bit of help. I'm going to have to get that jack, which I've already started to position, underneath this corner here. I want to close this gap up. This is what's going to square up the beam. Square up the beam with the left-hand spar. So, yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> let's see what happens. I think one of the reasons why this one is putting up such a fight is because that side's now rigid. When I was squaring that one up, this one would allow me to flex. This one doesn't want to give up now. So, in order to straighten this one out, it's fighting against that just a little bit. So I had to kind of twist this front end a little bit. And I chose to jack it up in the front instead, so that way the weight of the entire front end is pulling down on the front end. And it closed that gap up. Now I'm gonna retack that weld right there. And I've already checked it, it's already square. So we're in a good spot right where we're at. So let's see what happens. Well, that really wasn't all too bad. Um, yeah. <laughs> Got to tack back in there, it's tacked back in on the top. I'm gonna continue this weld the rest of the way up. And then, once that corner is now stable, then we'll patch the bottom of this. Okay. Well, here we go. Guess what? It's blue cup time again. <laughs> mm. I haven't had one of these in weeks. No, I don't drink a lot, you guys. I really don't. <sighs> Last time I had one, Cheeky got in it. <laughs> Cheeky likes her bourbon. Anyway, getting back on this here. I got that squared off again. We got that weld built back up. It's ugly as shit, but it doesn't matter. Most of that's gonna get cut away anyway, because a large part of that section's going to be replaced with uh, donor metal. This one requires a huge chunk on the top to be replaced. That side's top wasn't too bad. I had a little fatigue in it, which uh, I just actually welded over it. Welded much wider than the fatigue spot. I filled it in and that solved. This side, however, yeah. We're gonna do the bottom, now that we know it's square. And then we're going to come back with another donor piece and then fill in the top. All right, well, it's break time. This helps me to get rid of the jitters. Whenever I start getting up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, and I get a little aggravated with things, I, I get a little jitter, and it's not good to be shaking while you're welding. And no, it's not from inhaling galvanized steel or something else, because somebody's going to jump to that conclusion. It's just, I get the jitters. I don't even have to be welding, it's just uh, I move too much. The adrenaline goes up and I start working really fast. <laughs> oh. And today, I'm working against the sun. Once again, the sun goes down in about an hour and a half. I want to have that patch on the bottom put in at least, and if we get lucky, maybe we'll get the top too. All right, well, there's the sky and there's that wet mist I was telling you about that's coming in again. You ever seen the movie The Mist? It's kind of like, uh, like that, but without as many monsters, just the regular ones you find in the neighborhood. Anyway, um, everything will get soaking wet out here. It doesn't rain, it's just like this, this mist that sparkles when you shine a flashlight into it. And it just soaks everything. So anything in particular that's cold especially, like metal surfaces, they'll sweat immediately. I mean, just wet. My garage floor, if the garage door is open, wet all the way across. I have to close the house doors because just the, the moisture goes through the house and everything just gets wet. And if I leave the windows and doors open, I actually get mold. Bad, very bad news. Anyway, let's keep going yeah, at this here. Here's our donor piece. It's gonna go in here, just like this. What I'm actually going to do is the same as on the other side. I'm gonna leave this level in. This level did a great job of keeping everything straight for me and actually held it in without having to need a bunch of clamps. But 
It's gonna go in here something like that. The bend is gonna be there. So this, actually, is it a good idea to push down on this frame? Probably not. <laughs> Looks like we need to cut a little more out of the middle here. We'll do that, but otherwise this is almost ready to fit. All right, goal here, make this new piece match the angle that you see there. And it effectively does, there it is, locked in. So we're good, this sucker's ready to cut and weld out the other side, make it fit. New piece is gonna go in here, just like, well, there it is, just like that. Here's our cut line, it's gonna be right here. for this. Usually I like something hard to steal. I like my rat tail file. A scribe is good, but I usually want a thicker line that I can see better. Rat tail file does a pretty good job of that. And there it is. There's my line. This is what all needs to be cut away. I don't know if you can see it, but there's that ragged backside over here that we're gonna cut out last. The other side needs that done too. Here's our donor piece. Did you hear that sort of Transformers voice in the background? Here's our donor piece. Yeah, we're gonna come back to that in just a few minutes. We'll go in here, just like that. You see, we need to do a little more cutting. You do that on purpose. You never wanna take out too much metal. Although with a welder, you can grow metal, which is a nice thing, but Looks like lengthwise, I'm actually dead on. I'm gonna move this two by four, I'm not happy here. In fact, I don't know that I even need it to hold the frame up anymore because I think we're pretty rigid. So I'm gonna drop that jack down and then get this thing clamped back in with that level. And then we'll do any cutting that we might need to to make it fit. And then we'll clean off all the rust on the surfaces and get the uh, weld started on this thing. All right, well, we're good. Ow! I just put my hand down on my wire brush as I was standing up. Ow! Don't do that! <laughs> All right, drop that down. Take it away. Knock our 2x4 out. Uh oh. You know what? We're gonna put that back in. Here's why. Because it does keep the frame at the correct gap. We're just going to put it in a different location, away from where we're welding. All right. All right, well just a minute ago while the camera wasn't running, there was a loud bang. I mean like an explosion. And then a bunch of like loudspeaker sounding electronic Transformers kind of noises. I mean it was downright scary if you were like in a Transformers movie kind of thing. I didn't know what the hell I was hearing. Then I started to see a lot of traffic. A lot of people coming down the street, back and forth. What I understand is the road is closed over there. Um, some of my friends just came walking down the street and saw that there's a whole row of little apartments over there, like two-story houses, uh, probably about, I don't know, a dozen of them or so. They just kicked down every one of those doors. Every one, the SWAT team is raiding the entire damn building. Uh, we're guessing probably drugs. That would make a lot of sense, but uh, <laughs> this neighborhood's a good one, but you go one block in any direction. This is Pensacola for you. Anywhere pretty much here in the South. You can live in a nice area, but you go one block in any direction, sometimes even right next door to you, and you have crap. So anyway, I wish I lived in a corner. It would have been great to see the SWAT team, and they probably threw a flashbang into one of the apartments or something. I'm sure it was uh, <laughs> kind of interesting, but we missed it. Sorry, guys. I didn't catch it on video.
Here goes our final fitment. Goes in here just like this. And that piece goes in that end. And just like we did on the other side, we're gonna get the ends welded first. Yeah, we're in there. The level's not where it needs to be. It's supposed to be holding us up here when it wasn't. No flush on that side. Not quite flush over here. I don't understand why. That was why. There was a little booger on the end holding it in place. A booger! A booger! A booger, booger, booger! That's good. This is perfectly flush. We're going to start welding right here, and then we're going to weasel that side in, and then we're going to worm the rest of it. Okay. One more chance to level everything up just to make sure it's square with the beam. Probably a good idea. We did that one last time on the other side, we'll do it here too. It's a weasel. Bend that out. Look at that. It's almost like I was a professional and knew what I was doing or something. Oh, Duck Man never does anything right. He's got to do it my way. Because if he doesn't do it like I say, he don't know what he's doing. Oh, Duck Man. You're a damn mess, Duck Man. It's actually a lot of how I built Eleanor with little shoehorns and things, bending all these pieces back into shape. Anyway, the phone started ringing and I got interrupted, but nonetheless, I do have a nice light out here to help me see what I'm doing. See, the back side of that is still pretty shredded up, and that's because I didn't get to that yet. Same on this side, I need to get in there and work on that. That level, however, you notice that it is beautifully planed off the whole way along. So it is nice and straight once again. There's no jack underneath this thing supporting it. So it should be strong. I'm gonna take you around the dark side. The dark side of the frame. <laughs> there it is. Let's see, night shot might give us a better, a better look here. I'm trying to see on my screen, waiting for it to adjust. Ugh. Got a lot of welding smoke and stuff. There you go. My welds probably don't look too good because I did most of it in the dark. So we'll see tomorrow. I'm probably gonna look like a drunken monkey did it. But <laughs> I imagine that if they're not too pinholey, a little bit of grinding will solve that and it should look good. So I think we're good for the moment. Um, I'm gonna clean up and get back out here in the morning and get this thing finished up so that way you guys have a video for the weekend. I forgot that this camera has a little light on it. And there's the welds. They actually don't look too bad for somebody that was working in the dark. There's where it burned through because that's all rusty. So we're gonna cut that whole section out that you see right there. And the welds aren't too bad considering I was working in the dark with flux core. Yeah, they'll clean up pretty good. All right, well, I'm happy with that. And once we got everything finished squaring up, we gotta finish patching up the front end here too. This is all ragged here on the front. What I'll do is I'll just pretty much cut it flush and then bring this curve down and around. I might even just square it off because really I don't need to do anything too fancy under there. You know, it'd be nice to have a, a bolt flange or something for some kind of a, a bumper. And I guess I'll put some 
good heavy steel on there and a bowl flange and something to mount stuff to. I think it'll be useful down the road, whether it be a body mount or otherwise. Well, I cut out a couple more 2x4s and put them in the place, particularly two of them real close right here, because right there is where the frame is cracked. And it's not so much the frame itself that's cracked, but rather the weld that joins the rear and front sections together is right there. So that is where it opened up at. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean that out and then just simply fill it back in. Um, the rest of the metal surrounding it doesn't appear to be compromised, except for that, but that's not in contact with that. So I'll cut a little section out of that once this is set. But what we're looking at here, when I get down like this, you can see, if you look, down there on the right, right about where that junction is, the frame sags a little bit. So I'll get a jack underneath that and lift it up before we weld it back in. But all of those 2x4s up front are square with the beam, as you can see. So everything up there that I fixed is in good shape. So now we need to work our way backwards and get the center section of the frame straightened out. And we'll do and that once in the that's morning. done. Last thing we need to do is get these sides here. As you see, they're still kind of bowed out to the right. And the other one's bowed out a little bit to the left. So what I'll probably do is I'll remove this 2x4 that's in here and I'll put some ratchet straps on there and I'll pull it together. And I think I can pull it enough that it will just kind of go straight. There's no cutting that's necessary here. I mean, I don't see any reason I should need to. There is a crack in the top of the frame. In the last video, I couldn't find it. But there is a crack here, so when I cut this section out, I'll weld that back in. And I'm not going to try to weld that before I bend it because that technically becomes a pie cut. <laughs> All right, well, I guess that's it for tonight. Right, so please lick it, like it, comment, subscribe. Check out DuckShit.net for all my different social media links. Don't forget to finger <laughs> that like button and pluck the dingle belly while you're down there. I really appreciate that and it helps you to get updates every time I upload a video. Anyways, we'll be back in the morning with some more updates on this thing tomorrow. And, uh, well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Thanks for watching.